Hi everyone, I'm Damien Brady. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today I'm joined by fellow developer, a cloud developer advocate <laughs> uh, and member of the League of Extraordinary Cloud Developer Advocates as well, Mr. Abel Wang. Thanks Thank for you. joining me. Thank you. So uh, we were talking a little bit on Twitter with some other people mm -hmm. uh, about how a lot of our demos are very cloud focused, which right. kind of makes sense. We're cloud developer advocates, right? So we mm -hmm. talk about the cloud. But what about those people who have applications that run on IaaS, like infrastructure as a service, mm -hmm. or on-prem? Because there are still plenty of applications out there that don't run on cloud. Absolutely. So we can, like VSTS can deploy on-prem, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can deploy in front of your firewall, you can deploy behind your firewall, yep. you can deploy anywhere. Okay. So what I thought we should do is talk about how to do that with VSTS, and maybe Perfect. get you to show us how that works? Absolutely, I can. Awesome. All right, so I thought it was a great conversation on, on Twitter because every single one of my demos recently has been PaaS, containers, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So then when I decided to, we should set something up for, for either on-prem or IaaS, I decided let's use a typical web application that connects up to a database. So here's my Visual Studio solution that has my database project as well as my web project and tests and things like that. Okay. So the first thing we need to do inside of VSTS is to set up or build. And there's really not much to it. You can go ahead and just use the build template. And this is an ASP.NET application, so just an ASP.NET template. So here's my build. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty simple build. Let's go ahead and jump into it so you can see what it's actually doing. The template builds out a pipeline that makes sense for the language that you choose. So it's going to use NuGet, restore my NuGet packages, it's going to build my solution using a Visual Studio build, mm -hmm. then it's going to run all of my unit tests, then it's going to copy my DAC pack into my release directory, then it's going to publish everything back up to VSTS. Okay, and this is basically just what came from the template. You added, did you add the DAC pack stuff? Was I, I did add the copy. Okay, yeah. all right, so it's, but it's pretty basic, and at the moment we're not really dealing with where it gets deployed to at all, right? No, this is just the build pipeline. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So now we have our build, we have our artifacts, we need to deploy them, but we're deploying them on-prem or Correct. to IaaS or something like that, rather than to a cloud um, you know, app service or something like that. Correct. So how do we do that? Like what's, what does that look like? So what I was thinking is it'd be cool if we did something very real-worldy, right? Mm -hmm. What if we had like 15 web servers sitting behind a load balancer? Right. Awesome. How do you do something like that? Okay, I didn't set up 15, 15 web servers. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I, I set up two. Okay, two is good. Sitting behind a load balancer, right? Okay. So I set up, well, let me actually show you what that looks like. So here we go. I actually have a canary environment and a production environment where I have a database server and then I have two web servers that are sitting behind a load balancer. Okay, right? perfect. And then I also have a production environment that mirrors that as well. I've got one database server, two web servers sitting behind a load balancer. Okay. Awesome. So the best way to deploy when you have to deploy to lots of machines like that is to use something called deployment groups. And okay. these are relatively new in VSTS. They've been around, I don't know, a couple months now? No, more than that. Maybe half a year? Yeah, they've been in, they were in preview for a little bit, yeah. private preview before that. So yeah. I, think, I think we saw them a little bit earlier. But. Right. Right, right. But they're available for everyone now to use. They are, and yeah. I am a huge fan of deployment groups because mm -hmm. using deployment groups, we can now, basically you set up a deployment group so that it, it encapsulates an environment. So like my, okay. my dev environment. So my deployment group is gonna have my database server mm -hmm. and it's gonna have my two web servers. Okay, perfect. Right, and then you actually install agents onto each one of these machines mm -hmm. and now you're able to deploy in parallel. Right, so all of the deployments happen on those target machines specifically rather than yes. from a central build agent that tries to send things out, or sorry, release agent or something that tries to send things out. The operations actually occur on that target machine. Correct, absolutely. Okay, and because that happens, you can do it in parallel. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's, it's, and that's fantastic. So all right. to set up your deployment group, that's actually pretty easy. Let's just go ahead and go to our deployment groups, and you'll see that I already have a couple set up. Okay. But we'll go ahead and create a brand new one. And we'll, we'll just call this my demo deployment group. And you click on create. And that's all you need to do to create your deployment group. And notice in this little section over here, you, it gives you the script that you need to run to install and configure your agent on whatever machine you need to put your agent on. Okay, so does that, so here's, here's a question that I've been asked before. Does that script, um, 
if you're running that on a machine that can't reach out to the internet, because I think if you have a look in that script, there's a there's a path to a GitHub slash Microsoft slash VSTS agent. So it's trying to download from the web. Correct. You could modify that script if you didn't have access to the internet from that machine, right? You could. Correct. You can. However, remember, if you're sitting behind your firewall, the way these agents work is they need to be able to reach out and touch VSTS. Okay. So, but if you're using on-prem, yeah, you'll be able to tweak it and, and make it work that way. Okay. Because this is just a PowerShell script, right? Yeah, it's just a PowerShell script. Uh, this is one of my favorite features right here. If I check this box where it says use a personal access token, mm -hmm. that will create for me an access token that I can use to validate and authenticate everything that I need. Right. So now literally my setup, just I click on copy the script. Once I copy that script, I go to the machine that I want to deploy on. I can just go ahead and paste everything in there. If I hit enter, which I'm not going to do because I've already, already done this. Yep. If I hit enter, that is literally all you need to do. Oh, wait, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer two questions. Okay. You have to answer, do you want to add tags? And then you can tag these servers. Right. And it will ask you, what user do you want to run under? Oh, run the agent. Okay. Yeah. So this is handy, especially for more locked down environments where maybe you want um, these agents to run with least privilege, right? Yes. You want them to only be able to do the stuff that they're supposed to be able to do. Correct. Um, okay, right. That's awesome. Yep. So you've set up a couple of in advance. Right? Yes. You've got two of them. Um, actually, do you have, how many do you have? You've got two environments, but you've got more than that number of servers, is that right? Yeah, let me go ahead and show you what that looks okay. like. I'm jumping ahead. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So if we go into our deployment groups, you can see that I have a Canary deployment group, mm -hmm. and inside of there I have my three machines. Okay, awesome. And I did tag my servers, my web servers, I tagged it as a web server. And for my database, I tagged it as my database server. Okay. And so that's, you, that's so you can identify those during your deployment process to say, I only want some things to run on my uh, database server and one things to run on my web server. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Awesome. So those are set up. You've got these environments. Yep. How does that change your deployment process? Like, is that, a, is that a big deal to change what happens? No, not at all. Let me show you how you set up your deployment. Perfect. So here is my deployment. Let's go into my releases, and I'll go ahead and edit my pipeline so you can actually see exactly what I'm doing. Here's my pipeline. And this is a pretty simple pipeline. I'm just deploying first into a Canary environment and okay. then into my production environment. But where it gets kind of cool is if we drill into my Canary environment, you can see I have two deployment phases now. Right. I have an IIS deployment where I'm going to deploy to my IIS servers, and I have a database deployment. Now, if we go ahead and click on the IS deployment phase, mm -hmm. underneath deployment group, this is where I can actually choose which deployment group to deploy to. Right. So in my case, I chose my Canary, because this is for my Canary environment. Mm -hmm. And then the other things it will ask you is, out of all the machines in your deployment groups, which one do you want to deploy to by using tags? Right. So you can send it to all of them, or in my case, I just said send it just to my web servers. Yep. Right. So finally, you can say, you know what, we're going to now deploy all of these. Are you going to do it in parallel or mm -hmm. one at a time? So if you wanted to do, uh, so you can do multiple at a time mm -hmm. or one at a time. Right? Does that mean if you had, so going back to your example of 15 web servers, mm -hmm. you could do them in groups and make sure that those deployments worked OK before doing all of them? Absolutely, you can. Right? Right. See, that's the power, because then you can tag, let's say you had 15 servers or 16 servers. We'll make the math a little easier. Yeah, yeah. You yep. can tag yep. half of them and call them blue. The other half, you can call them green. Right. right. And then you can say, deploy first deploy them to my blue servers, mm -hmm. test them, make sure they, they work, then deploy them onto my green servers and swap them around. Right. right. right? So that, that way, you can have like no downtime. You can do complex deployments like that as well. Right, because I can see you know, other things being in this uh, deployment phase, like uh, removing these machines from a load balancer. Exactly. And then deploying to it and then adding them back in. And if that works, it'll do the next batch. Yep. So yeah, a really handy way to kind of reduce downtime. Yeah. Nice. And we can finally deploy in parallel too. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. So that, that, that's been the missing link inside of VSTS and TFS for quite a while. Mm -hmm. you know, I've had customers that, that, that would have this exact scenario. I have you know, 20, 20 machines behind a load balancer. Right now, I have to install all my stuff one at a time. That's a pain. Mm -hmm. You're doing the exact same thing for every single machine. Is there some way we can just do this in parallel in one shot? 
And now the answer is yes, we absolutely can. Right, that's awesome. So you've got, okay, you've got phase one, which is what deploys the application, and then phase two, which deploys the database. Yep. So you're doing app first and then the database to the database service? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is my second phase where I deploy to my database. Uh, the required, once again, I'm deploying to my Canary environment, and the required uh, tags is going to be database. Mm -hmm. And if we actually drill into the task itself, I'm just going to deploy a DAC pack file. Okay, awesome. Yep. And if we also look at my, I, let's jump back to my web deploy. If we look at the individual tasks, I'm going to first make sure my web application is there. Mm -hmm. And if it is, I use the IIS web app deploy task yep. to deploy my web app r right into the server. Okay. Right, so these are two tasks that come out of the box. You just fill in the properties for configuration, and bam, you're done. So because this, uh, this uh, phase is running on those target machines, if I wanted to do something else on those machines, like mm -hmm. you know, uh, clean up some logs, maybe do a database backup before I do my you know, um, overriding the database or changing a schema and things like that, those are going to run on those target machines as Correct. well. And if, you, if that phase is in parallel, it will run you know, that group in parallel for whatever settings you have too. Correct. Okay. Correct. And just like with a, a old school or normal deployment that we used to do, you absolutely can configure this and customize it and make it do whatever you want by adding and removing tasks. So you just click on the little plus mark and now you can start dragging and dropping tasks wherever you need. Right. Is there, so one other question that I'm sure I'll get asked is, uh, is there a subset, like these, these agents that run on those target machines, can they run any of those tasks, or is there only a subset that they are allowed to run if they're in a deployment group? They are allowed to run whatever is installed on that box, and right. whatever permission you give the user that's running that agent. Gotcha. Okay. So, so it really depends on how you want to customize and, and install and set up your environments. Gotcha. All right. So if you didn't want them to be able to reach out to Azure, you just don't have that capability from that machine, Correct. and then that step isn't able to run on that machine, it's not going to work. Correct. Okay, awesome. So this is, you've got the C CI, um, the continuous integration build, and it's producing the artifacts that you need, but you're deploying them to on-prem or to infrastructure as a service or something else mm -hmm. instead. It looks like the build doesn't change much at all, and the release is really just driven by these deployment groups and the and the permissions and the phases and so on that you have. Correct. And, and the one thing that I didn't show you is how do you actually use deployment groups or how do you set up your release to use a deployment group? Um, inside of my deployment, ah. if I click on the ellipses, this is where I can add new agent phases. Right. right. So I can add an agent phase, but I'm going to say add an agent phase, but let's use deployment groups. So right. instead of using an agent to deploy to lots of different machines, I'm going to say just deploy to my entire agent group. Right. Or so deployment it, group. it's right there. This is out of the box too, right? Yeah, this is right out of the box. Nice. Yep. That's really cool. So, so uh, the way you have it now, you're going to be able to deploy to your Canary environment, which puts it on those machines, the database mm -hmm. in the database server, um, and the whole thing is deployed on-prem. Like we're not talking about cloud at all at this point. Totally on-prem. Nice. 100% on-prem. Actually, I, I faked it because <laughs> I have VMs running in Azure, right? So it's either on-prem or IS. Right. Yeah. And it's, so we're not tied to Azure at all with those. It's, it's, you no. know, it could be inside your own firewalls and things like that. It absolutely can be inside your firewall. Right. So this is, a, this is an awesome feature. It's something that I think in the early versions of VSTS and TFS was kind of missing. The missing link. The missing link. So yeah. this means that you can manage everything with the same tool, not have a separate tool to, to do your on-prem deployments and a different one to use Azure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for walking me through that. That's an awesome feature, and hopefully that, uh, that helps with the people who have asked that question. Cool. Um, and yeah, if you have any feedback on this, uh, please tweet us. Uh, we are hashtag as L-O-E-C-D-A, or <laughs> um, how do we reach you on Twitter? Uh, at Abel Squidhead. Abel Squidhead, awesome. And I'm Damo Visa. Uh, you can contact us anytime. Stay tuned to the, uh, to the show. There's a lot more uh, DevOps Labs stuff coming. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you.